Hello everyone. First of all, apologize because I cannot be with you today in this seminar that Global Platform has set up. So secondly, I would like to introduce myself very briefly. My name is Yolanda San. I manage different groups inside of the GSMA. One is the Easing Group and the other one is the SAM Group that is collaborating with Global Platform in order to create what I'm going to explain today, which is the SAM technology. Let me start with my presentation. Hopefully, uh, I will be able to explain to you what is the SAM technology and how the SAM technology is going to be used. In order to introduce SAM technology, please allow me a couple of minutes to explain to you the eSIM. The eSIM, as the traditional SIM card, is a security container for the telecom profiles. The eSIM allows the operator to store their credentials, their algorithms, in order for the device to connect to the network. What is different compared to the traditional SIM cards is the secure remote connection that allows the operator to download the profile over the air. On the top of that, when the uh, profile is installed on the, UI, on the eSIM, the eSIM provides the capability for the user to manage the profiles uh, locally or remotely. Management in terms of enable, disable, or delete. In the context of M2M architecture, either the operator or the M2M service provider is allowed to manage those profiles remotely. In the context of consumer, it's always the user allowed to locally enable, disable, or delete the profiles. Occasionally, on, be and on behalf of the user, the operator also allowed to manage those profiles remotely. And finally, in the context of IoT, is the IoT manager the one in charge to enable, disable, or delete the profiles? How the ecosystem works? In the traditional SIM cards, the SIM manufacturer delivers the SIM card to the operator. For the eSIM, the eSIM manufacturer delivers the eSIM directly to the device manufacturer. The user typically purchases a phone that includes already a eSIM. On the other hand, the user establishes a contract with a particular operator. This operator orders a profile directly to their operator server, in this case, SNDP Plus, and the SNDP Plus is in charge to download the profile into a target UICC in a security manner. So the eSIM is the base for some application to be used in the eSIM device. Let's have a quick look of the eSIM adoption in the smartphone markets. The number of operators that are offering commercial eSIMs for smartphones has doubled in the last two years. More than 80 new operators have joined to the eSIM technology in recent months. It's clear that the eSIM commercialization has accelerated due to the announcement of the eSIM-only iPhones in US in September 2022. 1 billion of eSIM smartphones connection is expected by 2025. By 2028, half of the smartphones connection will use eSIM. There is a clear opportunity to extend the eSIM capabilities to provide a secure platform for high security service. And here is where the SAM is taking place. Following the explanation of this theme, I would like to introduce you the main use cases that the SAM technology is trying to cover. Today, I can get a medical appointment directly on my device because I have my national head card already installed on my device. I can go to a shop and pay directly with my phone because I have my credit card already installed on my device. Also, I can open the card with my phone because I have the digital card key installed on the device. And finally, I can make uh, online payments to my friends because I have my bank account already installed in the bank application on my device. All of these new services share something in common, which is the high security requirements that is required for the device in order to install those new services. Also, each service may be host in different secure elements in the device. And we have the example today, the eSIM 
is used to host the telecom profiles. And we have additional embedded secure element to host the bank application. That's why there is a clear opportunity to extend the ASIM capabilities to have a single secure platform for high security, not telecom services, additionally to the telecom services that we have already installed on the ASIM. And this is what the SAM technology is trying to define. Now is the turn to introduce the SAM technology. Following my explanation on the ASIM, we know that the ASIM allow the operator to install their profiles. The way those profiles are managed are defined by GSMA eSIM specification. Additionally, we can use the eSIM space to store what I call SAM profile for the moment. And this is what the SAM technology is providing, a secure container for non-telecom profiles, which are isolated and independent from the operator profile. Additionally, it's often a secure communication based on a PQI secure channel. Allows the service provider via secure remote connection to manage their own services, host on what I call SAM profile, which is indeed a SAM security domain according to global platform specification. And this is what the, the SAM technology is offering, offering the service provider the possibility to manage their non-telecom services independent of the operator profile. At this stage, I would like to uh, highlight that GSMA has defined the security requirements for the, the, the SAM technology. And at the point of time where we decide to create a technical specification, the GSMA members discuss the possibility to collaborate with Google Platform for the creation of the technical specification. And the main reason for that is because Global Platforms has a huge experience on the definition of secure element specification. And GSMA members consider that this is going to accelerate the adoption of the uh, SAM technology into the market. Finally, I would like to highlight that it is expecting that the first technical solution to be ready by Q2 or Q3 of this year. Now that we know the SAM technology, I will explain uh, the SAM ecosystem. On the, last, uh, on the left side, we have the uh, service provider that has two mechanisms in order to manage their own services that are installed under a dedicated SAM applet. So the first option is via application service provider that we use the service provider app to connect with the dedicated SSP security domain that will uh, create a personalized the SAM applet as requested by the SSP. The second option uh, for the service provider to manage their own uh, services via, is via SAM service manager. This one will have two possibilities. One is via service uh, provider app and local applet assistance to connect to the SSP security domain that will uh, create a personalized the SAM applet on behalf of the application service provider. And the other options that the SAM SM will have is directly connect to the local applet assistance to connect to the SSP security domain. And this is the one that will be in charge to uh, create and personalize the SAM applet. The local applet assistance is just a piece of software on the device that provides the capability to manage the SAM services to the SAM SM. So the SAM applet is uh, installed under dedicated SSP security domain to run the SSP service in a security manner as requested by the end user. As explained before, the SAM security domain is a dedicated SSP SD and their SAM applets to manage the secure SAM commands generated by the SAM SM or the SSP. Inside of the SAM security domain, we can have several SSP security domains. The last but not the least is the certificate authority, which is in charge to issue PKI certificates to the different elements that we have inside of the ecosystem. A SAM service manager, application service provider, and some issuer. And now that we know the ecosystem, let's try to explain how it works. 
I have tried to simplify the code flow in order to be able to explain how the SAM model is going to work. As I explained in the previous slide, there are two mechanisms for the service provider to manage their own services. One is via application service provider and the other one is via SAM service manager. I will explain first how it's going to work for the SAM SM and then later on I'm going to explain how it's going to work when we use application service provider. In the case of the SAM service manager, it is required to have their own certificate in order to be able to authenticate against the SAM security domain. That's why there is a certificate authority that is going to issue a certificate to the SAM issuer that will allow the SAM issuer to behave as a certificate authority in order to issue their own SAM SD certificates uh, into the SAM security domain. Additionally, the certificate authority will issue the SAM SM certificate to the SAM SM in order to allow the SAM SM to uh, mutual authenticate against the uh, SAM security domain. When we are talking about the SAM security manager, there are two ways for the uh, SAM SM to download, install, and personalize the SAM applet on behalf of the SSP. One is via local applet assistant, and the other one is via service provider app. When we use the uh, local applet assistant, it is required to have an access control mechanism between the SAM SM and LAA. As soon as this access control is established, we will follow up with the mutual authentication between the SAM SM and the SAM SD. If the mutual authentication is performed correctly, then we will create and personalize the new SSP security uh, domain following by the installation of the SAM applet via LLA and SSP security domain. When we use the service uh, provider app, it's again required an access control mechanism, but this time between the service provider app and the local applet assistant, as soon as the co access control is established, we will perform the mutual authentication between the SAM SM and SAM SD via service provider app. We will create and personalize the new security domain in this particular case via SSP and LAA. And finally, we will install and personalize the SAM applet via service provider app, LLA and SSP security domain. As soon as the SAM applet is installed, the user will be able to use the service that this particular service provider is offered to them. The second option that I'm going to explain is when we use the application service provider. The same as before, if the application service provider wants to be part of the SAP ecosystem, it is required to have their own certificate. The SAM certificate authority will issue again a certificate to the SAM issuer. The SAM issuer will behave as a certificate authority in order to issue their own SAM SD certificates. In uh, addition to that, the certificate authority will issue a SSP certificate to the SSP that is going to be used to authenticate the application service provider against the SAM SD. Uh, in this particular case, the SSP uh, will download and install and personalize the SAM applet via service provider app. In this particular case as well, we did, it is required an access control mechanism between the service provider app and the SAM SD. As soon as the access control mechanism is established, we will have a mutual authentication between the SSP and SAM SD. We will create and personalize a new SSP service uh, security domain via SSP application. And finally, we will install and personalize the SAM applet via service provider app. As soon as the SAM applet is installed, again, the user will be able to use those new services that the service provider is offering. Those two slides are trying to illustrate how flexible the SAM technology is going to be for the service provider. The service provider will be able to select one model or another based on the different marketed needs. Having said that, I would like to finish my presentation with a summary of the learnings that we have uh, from today. So the first one is that the eSIM will add value in order to be able to store hash security services additionally to the, to the telecom services that we have today. Thanks to the SAM technology, we will have a single secure element, the eSIM, to be able to store new services that will reduce the cost of the integration 
and will optimize the space on the device, which means that we can free up more space for other device components, for instance, larger batteries. Finally, the SAM technology will provide a standard mechanism to be able to download and manage no telecom services that are installed inside of the eSIM. So it seems that the SAM opened the door for a new opportunities that we hope will create new products and business models for operator and non-operator services. And that's all for my side, and this concludes my presentation for today. I would like to thank uh, to all of you for your time today. If you have any comments or questions regarding the SAM or the eSIM technology, don't hesitate to contact me on the email address that you can see on the screen. And I wish you a very successful seminar today. Thank you very much and see you at some point.